We're going down, down in an early round. Wait, Nikki. Oh, that's Eric. We're, what? we're supposed to be doing Fallout. I'm like jamming because we're going to be talking about the Fallout boy game today, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're talking about the original Fallout. And boy. Not... <laughs> this isn't a game where you play as a rock band and you tour around the United States and the world. and Actually, like... maybe it is. Uh, Luke... I, I don't remember any uh, guitars, but there's definitely touring that's happening in the game. <laughs> I, I, I may have played the wrong game, you guys. Just kidding. We're talking about Fallout, a post-nuclear role-playing game. I don't know. Fallout Boy has a better ring to it, I think. Yeah, they should have called this game Fallout Boy <laughs> instead of the other thing. Yeah. Anyways, this is Press City Button. I'm Nikki. I'm Eric. And war. War never changes. In this world of Fallout, I'm Luke Newcomb. (laughs) (laughs) What up, Luke? Wow. So do we have to say war every time we want to talk to you? Oh, God. (laughs) Please, no. (laughs) It's one name I go by. (laughs) All right. All right. So, Nikki, what is Fallout? Fallout, a post-nuclear role-playing game, (laughs) is surprise, surprise, a role-playing game developed and published by Interplay Productions, for DOS, Windows, and Mac OS in 1997. In a post-apocalyptic and retro-futuristic world, decades after a global nuclear war between the United States and China, the player must scour the wasteland for a computer chip that will fix their vault's failed water supply system. Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> it's all about those resources. Minor spoiler warning for some story talk for the first Fallout game and possibly some some little things uh, about the other games. Yeah, and the lore. But uh, nothing too crazy. The game is almost 20 years old, though, so if you haven't played it yet, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with Yeah, that? I agree. All right, we ready to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Woo! Woo! Fallout. It's an old ass game. <laughs> so I bet you were able to find a shiz ton of history. It's not, it's not that old, 1997. Uh, oh, yeah. There, there's a lot of information and there's a lot of sources for it. Uh, this is like almost like a cult of information. I had to like go through a lot of stuff and kind of like match what was matching together and uh-huh. be like, this stuff sounds like it's made up. <laughs> Fact check. Uh, yeah, fact check all, all the stuff that I could fact check. But before we get started on the history, why did you choose this game, Luke? Because I know you play a bunch of games. We both thought that you were going to pick something like older, even older than this. <laughs> well, this is pretty, um, this is so, one of the older ones. So, uh, yeah, what, what made you choose Fallout? So, I've always loved like post apocalyptic type of stories like Resident Evil, anything to where it's like, it's so bad. It's like, can you survive in this? What can you scavenge to like survive? Mm-hmm. Uh, You're really just hoping humanity ends, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, like, well, well, zombies won't get me. I'll get them first. <laughs> so when it, when it starts happening, I'll be ready. I uh, like how gamers, people who sit on their couch and like handle a controller all day, are like, yes, I will totally survive in zombie apocalypse uh, because I, I'll lock all the doors and no one will be able to come in. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, you, you got to get to an island is what you got to do. Oh, <laughs> really? thought about this? I thought about it, too, and I thought, like, somewhere in the Midwest where it's just really rural and there aren't a lot of people to become zombies would be a good spot. And mm. you have lots of food, and you have, like, a lot of corn and cows and stuff. I thought about it, too, and I'll be the first to admit that I'll probably be the first person to die. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm the least athletic person in the world. <laughs> You'll be sprinkling like salt and pepper on your arm. Be like, here, just go ahead and do it. I'll, be, try- I'll be trying to run away and then I'll trip immediately and get eaten. Yeah, like that thing that. that thing where you're trying to get into your car and you drop your car keys as they're coming for you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I really feel like it's going to be like when and where you're at whenever it happens, mm-hmm. where you're going to like, because, of course, resources and stuff like that are going to be. And then also defense, because you know, got to be able to sleep at night. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, definitely get away from cities. That's for sure. But to get back on track, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you play this game like right when it came out or did you play like a little bit after 
Well, uh, when I first originally played this game, it was actually on someone else's computer, and I was like, I was like, I don't even know how to play this thing, and so <laughs> I was like, yeah. And then, but later on, uh, I actually played Fallout Three, and I fell in love with the story and the game and everything I had to do with it. And I was like, well, now I got to play all of them. Yeah. So I'm back to Fallout One. It's it's really fun because they have like little Easter eggs, I guess you could say, all over the place that have like a little bit of history of like what happened before, you know, your time coming out of the vault. Cool. There's a lot of twists and plot changes in, mm-hmm. it, in the story that, that are really great. I've always enjoyed like turn-based type of thing where it's like I have a second to think like where do I want to do? And I don't have to like worry about like, oh, I only got a certain amount of time to do stuff. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, Fallout and all that, all the lore and stuff like that is just really like, entertaining to me. Cool. Well, I guess let's get into it then. <laughs> all right. Well, Fallout was, it was the development of it started in uh, like 1994 by tim kane and originally like he started out just by himself and it was kind of like a side project the original game was actually supposed to be the sequel to wastelands which wasteland was more like even more basic than this game <laughs> but there was disagreement with the people who were going to give them the engine for the character creation which was called like gurp so a guy named steve jackson created the generic universal role-playing system and this is something that's used pretty much on like all like tabletop games and stuff like that and it was integrated into video games so it's more or less like literally like dungeon and dragons type of stuff like you know you roll you know rolling dice type of like yeah this. so there was a disagreement on like uh the production of the next game like i think it was like it's too gory and too violent so they didn't want to be a part of it so they split it ways so the creator Tim Kane, he created a new character creation thing based on that called Special, which is strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, luck. Wow, so, that's so, a lot of things. Right. So, so that those are the points that you put in into the game whenever you're putting your, your allocating. So it was like a whole a total new thing. Cause I think like with D and D you have like wisdom and other stuff, but they he, he went they went a different way with their own thing, but mm-hmm. it's based loosely on that. The game took several years and almost like thirty million dollars. How uh, much? Three million dollars to do it. Which, oh, okay. Uh, I thought you said three hundred million. Uh, I was like, whoa! <laughs> in nineteen ninety-seven. So three million would have been a pretty decent sized budget oh, back yeah. then for a game, I imagine. Uh, oh yeah, back in nineteen ninety-seven, a million dollars was like, like <laughs> you know, like a lot. And now a million dollars. I mean, to me, it's still a lot, but compared to like. The billionaires, you know, a million dollars is not a lot. It, in 2022, it would have been equivalent of $5.11 million. Okay. Dang. And the game development started slowly. They ended up like a couple years with only 15 people. Then eventually it ramped up to like 30 people. They actually had a lot of discussion about the actual name of the game itself, which... Uh, I would call it like The Vault. <laughs> <laughs> the Vault. <laughs> oh, people, you know, that vault, could also be like vault you're, you're vaulting over something. That's true. So, actually, uh, one of the names was Vault 13. Ha! Huh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Boom! Uh, a a GURPS post nuclear role playing game. Uh, another one was Armageddon, which Interplay already had set aside for a different game, which never actually got developed. Oh. And then finally, the president, mm. Brian Fargo, was like Fallout. And that's what they ended up going with. Hmm. Cool. Because I mean, of Fallout Shelter, right? And yeah. Things yeah. like that. Yeah, Fallout's a good name for it. Yeah. Simple. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah. So when it first came out, they sold 600,000 copies worldwide. So they got a That's lot That's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they didn't do actual commercials. What they did was they sent out a demo disc. And that's how they more or less advertise. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Man, like, in the late 90s, that was like everybody was doing that. <laughs> yeah. I remember being that age, though. And like, it gives you a chance to play a bunch of games and see what you like. Yeah. I remember like, they get, get like a magazine and then like, it always have like, you know, a computer magazine to have those free mm-hmm. discs. And they were like, ah, oh, free games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you know your game is good, what's the worry, you know, because people are going to want to continue playing it. Yeah, exactly. If the game sucks then that's where you might have a problem where people are like, eh, no, thank you. Like, thank, thanks for that demo disc. Now I know that I don't have to buy, purchase anything. I don't yeah. know how crappy that game is. <laughs> so when it came out, did people like it? Did it? Was it received well? 
Yes, it was. Like it, it was actually nominated for a bunch of different awards and stuff like that. One was like PC Role Gaming of the Year, uh, Outstanding Achievement in Music and Sound. Oh, cool. Um, oh, that's interesting. Those are just nominations. Mm-hmm. They got Best RPG Adventure Game. Ones that they did get was uh, Best Role Playing Game from GameSpot, which have you heard a magazine or something called mm-hmm. GameSpot? Yeah. I, I've, yeah. Heard the, I've heard like the video game store, but I didn't realize there was a magazine called that. Yeah, I remember the website GameSpot back in the day. Yeah, me too. I don't remember the magazine part. Well, well a lot of websites are magazines. Yeah, that's websites. true. And then uh, Role Playing Game of the Year from Computer Games Magazine. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's funny because like I hadn't really even heard of this game until like later in the series. I think it was Fallout 3 was when I finally heard about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. So it's interesting that it actually was doing pretty well and was getting this kind of critical acclaim. And I had no idea it was even a thing. <laughs> well, I feel like it was one of those first games where you really had to be into computers because first you had to pay out the money to buy a computer. And that time, like to have a personal computer back then, it was probably like 4000 for a personal computer was probably like a normal. Mm-hmm. As where today it's like, oh, so much. So I feel like the first gamers were like, this is like the stuff, kind of like a full throttle where it's like, this is just starting to come out and showing like the potential of games how they could be like so much more and not just be like a basic like jump to the side jump over things it's like oh here's puzzles Mm -hmm. now you you gotta find things and like we're gonna hide this is like also hiding stuff in the map where it's like oh i found this like oh yeah (laughs) yeah there's a ton of like secrets and like details in this game a lot of like little details too it's it's kind of nuts how much they kind of crammed in into this game yeah and some of the inspiration they took was from Mad Max, Buck Rogers, which that's why you have all like the laser guns and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And a boy and his dog, which is another apocalyptic thing about some guy who finds his dog and they're just roaming the, the wastelands, which, cool. which I yeah. was like, that's, that's cool. Like their inspiration for everything. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. You can tell that this game has a lot of inspiration. Especially with, like, movies and stuff. Like, I can see a lot of the references there. Especially Mad Max and, like, some of that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Too bad you don't have a sweet car. You get to, like, drive through the desert <laughs> in this game. You do. Uh, I did find a, uh, a used car shop at one point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh... Totally the same. <laughs> well, you couldn't actually buy any cars from the guy, unfortunately. <laughs> I tried. I'm like, yeah, sell, sell me one of your cars, like... Like, yeah, if you just throw in some gas, like, I'll buy it. <laughs> He's like, well, I don't have any gas. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. going to be a problem. Darn. Yeah, there is no gas. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's like, yeah, you could have a, a brand new car. Everything works, but you ain't got no gas to drive it. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd actually, like, seen stuff from this game before I really knew what the game was. Like, the little blonde, I guess, what do you, the Fallout Pip? Is that uh, what he's Pit Boy. Pit yeah. Boy. Pit yeah. Boy. Yeah, like I I saw him in things like way before I actually knew that he was from Fallout. Yeah. Like and Nuka Cola, that was another thing that I saw around before I really knew like what it was from. So I think they did a good job of like coming up with little cool, like marketable things that like yeah, and turn into toys and stuff really easily. It's <laughs> kind of nuts how much of that stuff is really in the first game too, because when you think about like series like this, sometimes they'll add like more stuff as the series progresses. Mm-hmm. But like from here, like you can, yeah, see Nuka Cola, the Pip Boy, like all the, the main signature things are like there, like the power armor, the some of the em- enemies, like mm-hmm. the super mutants and stuff like that like that's all in the first game <laughs> which is super strong cool. branding very yeah. strong branding oh yeah they they definitely thought out this story very well when they created the game granted i don't know if like the lore or stuff like that was at the same time but i feel like they they set the game up to go forever like mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah it's like a very open ending and like there's so many possibilities they could go with which they they have awesome well i know that there's like a lot of like lore and story to this game so oh, oh yeah did you find anything I'm, about all that i mostly whenever anyone tried to talk to me i was just like i'd say <laughs> something sarcastic <laughs> oh my gosh 
See, you, I, I, I you don't like you so, can't tell me to put away my guns or I'll blow your face off. <laughs> you can be so sassy in this game. It's great. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, like I always try to be like you know the angel of the game where I like I help everybody and it's like I, I'm gonna be so polite to everybody because if, you're gonna give me good stuff if you do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if I've talked to someone like several times and I'm like and I'll start doing the sassy stuff, I'm like you're not giving me anything. So you know. yeah. <laughs> I mostly just didn't want a chance of dying, so I was like afraid to be sassy, but it yeah. always made me laugh. Like, like who's who gonna would say that? Who's gonna get so mad that they try to kill me after I say something sassy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which a lot of the stuff in the game that like, you can get past if you just say the right things, which is kind of a cool thing. Like you can put your luck like all the way up and just hope that you just everything goes your way. <laughs> That's or, great. or charisma all the way up and just like you get like all the dialogue boxes yeah so you all of a sudden you're like have all these options to be like oh actually you want to give me that mm -hmm. <laughs> become princess donut <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly the dungeon crawler crawl series this is a very obscure reference Nikki. i know uh, it, but it, i love princess donut they, so much they, they need to know about princess donut <laughs> <laughs> totally different thing guys totally different. back on track back on track <laughs> so but yeah the the lore is like so so great like not only part of this game which that's one of the things i really liked about the game is like finding like those like data discs mm -hmm. and like downloading and reading like all the stuff that like this happened and being like whoa all these things happened before the, the great war mm -hmm. which the best way to describe like what's going on during this is that think of our timeline pretty much exactly the same except for and like right after world war ii the night like 1950s and 1960s like the timeline just jumps a different direction. Everything else is the same, but all of a sudden, like the Cold War doesn't end, and we're still battling with the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. and that's what's driving us. All of a sudden, it's like we're still war torn. We need to keep everything the same, which is what brings you to like having like all the you know fifties and sixties like vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah, I get that. So like, so uh, it's almost like an alternative timeline. Yes. So, like, it's all happens on Earth. Like, it takes place in California, like, the southeast part of California around, like, Los Angeles. That would, that would be southwest, though, right? So, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, Whatever. Yeah. So, Somewhere so, in California. Yeah, yeah. I don't live there. <laughs> uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the name turned into Angel Boneyard. <laughs> which eventually, <laughs> eventually just went to Boneyard. So did you okay. guys make it to Boneyard in the game? Yeah. So like, there's uh, like, there's reasons like for a lot of the names in the game. Like they were like, oh yeah, this is oh. this, this is the bones of La Los Angeles. So it's the Angels' bones, mm -hmm. and then they turned it to the Boneyard. But anyways, that's. I think they should just go ahead and change the name of Los Angeles to that. Anyway, that sounds way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that sounds more like a place in like Vegas, the Boneyard. It does. <laughs> Used to be L.A. Now it's the Boneyard. Oh yeah, it all the boning. It probably it probably is a place with the mobsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, take him out to the Boneyard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll he'll sleep with the bones tonight. Yeah. Sleep with the bones. <laughs> he'll sleep with the fishes. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that better though. Sleep with the bones. Sleep with the bones. <laughs> so yeah, so the timeline changes. Pretty much what happens is the United States end up like separating each other into like 13 groups of the United States, like uh, 13 commonwealths. That's where you get all the commonwealths, 13 commonwealths. Oh, okay. And the idea behind that was that they were trying to help regulate like all the, the strife that was going on, stuff like that. So they're kind of like above the state, but below the federal. Like so was whole. this after the fallout happened? No, this is before. So, oh, okay. so the, the Great War happened in 2077. And before that, like everything is ramping up to the Great War, which is where they dropped nuclear bombs on pretty much every city on the world. Oh, wow. And so the, the Great War, yeah, like I said, it's, uh, happened in 2077 and it only lasted for like two hours. But it was just nuclear. <laughs> two hours. It, 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 that, that's all the longer that oh, war was. God, that's because, scary. Because they literally just yeah. destroyed the world. Oh, man. And wow. game over. They're done. Except for the people who, that is crazy. who got selected to be in like, you know, the, the fallout vault shelters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 
which that right there in itself is like a nuts idea. So uh, like, I was, there's so much stuff. I'm let me. Uh, so uh, I imagine like that's what like the glow is like where it'd be like a site that was hit with the uh, where the bomb hit. That's correct. And that, there's still a lot of radiation there. It was a research facility that they were researching FEV, which is forced evolutionary virus. Oh, is that where you get the the super mutants? Yes. Yeah. Mm. And so that's also why everything around there is mutated is because I hit that that bunker and all the stuff they had in there went up in the sky <laughs> and, it fell, and, and, and it fell down on everything and it started mutating everything. Yeah. Uh, the whole reason behind that is that Republican China was starting to use biological warfare against them and they were like using it more and more. So the United States was like, how do we make a counter? To uh, this. Yeah. So like, well, we got to make our immunities to where we can survive anything they throw at us. And so they started this, this thing to be like, okay, what can we do to like change our DNA to where when they do this and whatever they did, they eventually came out with that, which made the super mutants. Okay, cool. Oh man. Like I said, there's like so much going on. Like, uh, my brain is filled with <laughs> all the lore and all this is come a out lot the uh, deeper and a lot more thought out than I got from playing well, the game. Yeah. My, my usual like uh, thing is I would, I would go into a room. Someone would try to talk to me. I'd start chucking grenades at him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, stop talking to me. I got grenades. Yeah. I got things to do. Yeah, again, like re- reading just like the stuff that's in the game you find out all the information is like they're talking about like, Oh, we're about to like move this base to another place. But then it was like just before the great war, but then it blew up before they could move it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, China and America are pretty much like the big powers and they're fighting over oil and resources. Oil is like the, the last big resource that they're fighting over. And like, uh, Alaska ends up being the last place with oil. So China is trying to take over Alaska and America is like, well, we need to keep Alaska to us because we need the oil. They end up annexing Canada. So all of a sudden, America is Canada, too. So that way they easier get to Alaska <laughs> to, to be able to keep the oil. I mean, it's, it's yeah. so crazy. And then eventually it's just like they all run out of resources and someone decides, well, I guess I'm just going to nuke everybody. <laughs> we, we don't have anything. I'm going to kill everybody. <sighs> yeah. And so, uh, but seems pretty realistic, honestly. <laughs> So again, like there's so many different side stories going on because even before all this happened, even, even before like China started being like, well, we're going to start using bioweapons and stuff like that. American elites started their own like dark secret group called the Enclave. So they were like, oh, we see what's going to happen. This planet's going to get nuked. So what we need to do is we need to have a plan to get off this planet and be able to get to another planet and mm-hmm. repopulate. That's where it brings you back to the vaults. The vaults were not there to save people. They were there to experiment on people. What? Yeah. So if you're lucky, you got to be in one of the control vaults. So that those are the vaults that you come out of, like Vault 13, Vault 111, Vault 101. Those were control vaults. The other vaults were the ones that they experimented on to see, like, how long can people live in isolation together and, like, if we tell them to do something like... Oh, uh, man, that's so fucked up. It's like, oh, it's yeah. like, it's, it, it's, it's <laughs> like there, there was one experiment at Vault 11 where they were like, all right, you need to kill one person. <gasps> and if you don't, then we're going to gas you all and you're all going to die. Uh, so, what? so they ended up killing the, the vault overseer. In which they and so like every year they'd be like all right you need to kill somebody and so they, it became what's the point of that <laughs> it, it's psych- psychological tests to see if they would actually follow directions and stuff like that and then so it, it became where like the vault uh, overseer became the yearly sacrifice so if you were chosen to be the vault overseer oh, no. and then one day they're like you know who knows how long they were like no we're not going to do it and then a recording played good job you did the right thing. <laughs> and no one that died. That's messed up. Yeah, like, but they would, do other, they would also do other things where like, they would they make a vault that's not actually sealed up to where radiation could leak in, and they would be able to see like, the effects of that. Because, again, they're, they're trying to make more or less like a generational ship that they can use to get to another planet. And, like, like again, like, these are like crazy like backstories and lore of what's going on because all of a sudden you're like, holy crap. And, again, like, in the game, if you read... Read those little things. You'll get like little clips of like, oh man, that's what happened. And like, it's. Yeah, that's absolutely nuts. Yeah. And there's so much like little lures and stuff like that. So 
Now I feel like I'm like on a roll. <laughs> like, like, I yeah, stop. like we don't have to get into everything because we'll be here yeah. for like five hours. Oh, yeah. But uh, but it uh, is really super interesting. Yeah. Uh, one last thing about lore, just to kind of like uh, so the the main boss spoiler, main boss uh, of the game, his name was Master. His backstory is that he was actually a vault dweller in Vault Eight, and he apparently was kicked out because he murdered someone. I'm not sure like if that's the correct story. But anyway, he left and that's whenever he started his journey outside and eventually he found himself into the military base up top where he fell into a vat and that's how he became deformed. But whenever he fell into it, he was also able to start absorbing like other creatures, like a mouse ran by, his body would just absorb that. And like th- then he found that like when he <laughs> but then he found like when he would absorb like people and stuff like that, all of a sudden he's like, now I have like their memories. And so Ooh. so he started like becoming smarter, smarter, and like eventually he was starting to experiment with the FEV. And what he was doing is he was putting like two things in the vat at a time. So he'd put like a dog and a human. Which if you guys saw those lesser sentinels like those guys that had like a bunch of legs Mm -hmm. and two heads. That was a dog and a human. That was because of his experiments. (laughs) Whoa. So like he, that's what he was doing. He was experimenting by like combining two things. He'd do like a bear and a, and a rat. And he would mix those up, and you get those giant bear rats out there. <laughs> I thought those were bears. But yeah, I mean, I thought they were bears, too. And then it was like, yeah, it was like giant mole rat or something. Or, or moles mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. But, yeah, again, like, I like there's so much stuff I wasn't sure, like, what, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, it's crazy, man. We got a lot of lore, but we actually didn't really touch on the story of the game that much. Like the, so yeah, you're a vault dweller and you're trying oh. to get a water chip. So what I want to know is what, does this water chip exist? <laughs> because I think I get it. Yeah, I didn't find it either. Well, oh, yes, it most definitely exists. Mm. And there's a couple different ways of getting it, but it so, definitely. So who has it? The Necker, ne- Necker, ne- Necropolis. Ne- Necropolis. Oh yeah, Necropolis. That, that's, that's where it's at. You end up like uh, talking to one ghoul in the sewers, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, we have one, but you know we can't give it to you because you know we can't make water and stuff like that." But they have a water pump that super mutants are are protecting, and so mm. uh, but it's broken. But they won't let anybody fix it because the super mutants are tra- <laughs> are trying to capture people who want to try to take it. So that way they can go and convert them into mo- more super mutants. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart, actually. <laughs> so, so, so it's a it's a human trap, is what it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, I was right there. I was in that like sewer system or whatever, and I just kept getting lost. So I was like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go, because <laughs> it's like a maze down there. Yeah, th- there's one point I think you have to go back up top and, mm-hmm. then, and then find the other entrance to go back down into it yeah exactly yeah anyways <laughs> i was so close but yeah so you, you can go there and there's two different possibilities like either you fight those mutants and then you fix it or you talk to the mutant he captures you you go to the base and then you escape the base and then you go back and then you know fight the mutants and then, <laughs> uh, and, and, then, and then you fix the water pump and after you fix the water pump they'll let you go down there and get the chip and then you take that back. Uh, okay. Cool. So that's the game. Cool. And then, yeah, yeah. And then well, so, uh, and then I assume you get a, a glorious treatment as you are welcomed back into your vault no. with a water chip. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no. You're set back out because they find out that oh, there's super mutants. It's like you gotta stop them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? So after you the work break, never ends. Yeah. So after you get the chip back, they're like, yeah, you gotta go out there and and like stop the source of the the super mutants before they you know they come and take the people from the from the vault because that's what they're looking for is the people from the vault. That's their that's their biggest game. <laughs> uh, so it kind of feels like it's all for nothing. <laughs> New game name idea it should have been called the Vault People. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So you guys want to move on to pros and cons and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Starting with the pros. Starting with the pros. All right, Nikki. Me? Yeah. I feel like maybe you didn't like this game as much as the rest of us. <laughs> so, okay, well, you know, 
that's not fair because Luke literally picked this game out of like thousands of games. He's gonna pick. <laughs> <laughs> so we know he really, really, really. Actually, likes yeah. Let's it, start. Let's know? start with Luke. Um, I think you're a medium liking it, right? And I'm more on the lower end, but I didn't hate. I did not hate the game. I feel like I'm actually kind of on the higher end. Okay. Of liking this all game. Right, all right. Yeah. Let's start with Luke since you picked yeah. it. You, I'm definitely top shelf liking what's, this. Uh, what's like one of the main things you like about this game? Well, the story is yeah. my oh, yeah. main thing. Like, I, video games, if they can capture my imagination and pull me in mm-hmm. with a really great story, that's always my favorite thing. Yeah, it's so detailed, and I like it's really cool to hear like how much thought they put into everything, because most games don't go that hard, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, I mean, a lot of games do, but not all games do. So. Yeah, it's one of those, if you're really getting into it, you can really keep digging and digging like as mm-hmm. much as you want. And then on the other hand, you really don't have to dig that much. You can pretty much just play through and kind of ignore most of the story if you want. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You don't even have to do any of the side quests. It's just more or less getting leveled up to be able to fight those battles whenever mm-hmm. you do have to. Yeah. Yeah. To kind of piggyback off the story... I like that this world that they've created, like the environment that you're in, it's just very kind of like believable and it's almost like an open world game. Yeah. I mean, I guess it kind of is. I mean, it definitely is an open world game. Yeah. You have like so much to explore and it's just like very stylized and that feeds into the story and making it really like believable and everything. Yeah, the 50s vibe is, like, I, I really like that. I always kind of fascinated with, like, the 50s and, like, that that kind of, of, like, I don't know, like, the cars and the way that they had everything was kind of, like, weird. I don't know. It was, <laughs> it, it, it was like, not futuristic, but it kind of was. It was, like, yeah. what they thought was going to be futuristic yeah. and not what was actually futuristic. <laughs> yeah, I need some fins on the back of my car because it's going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Man. But yeah, for me, like I really enjoyed the game. It reminded me a lot of like the original Diablo, just in the art style. Yeah, which actually came out around the same time. And you know, I know a younger version of me would have really gotten into this game, would have really loved it, if I would have been able to get it to run on my really crappy computer that I had <laughs> back then. It was pretty much a piece of junk. But yeah, I I enjoyed it overall. <laughs> I also like the fact that you can just be a, a complete smartass to everybody. <laughs> Oh, I have that too. Like, yeah, the funny dialogue options, those like really cracked me up. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same here. Like uh, in the taunts, whenever you're in battles mm-hmm. and like whenever you get hurt, it'll give you like a description and it's like, oh, you got like an awesome scar to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Ian's dialogue, that he's it's so cheesy. <laughs> uh, take that and all this. And like, oh, I love it. Like when he uh, when he decides he's not going to use his gun anymore and he's going to like start fist fighting. He, he yells, I'm going to kick your ass because <laughs> you're on <laughs> towards him. <laughs> I love it. It cracked me up every time. <laughs> uh, what's something else you got, Luke? I definitely like the like the turn base of the, the game. Like I, I like being able to use strategy to be like, all right, well, because again, to keep like dog meat alive, you have to like angle yourself just right so that way you know the enemies don't shoot towards him yeah they they pick you as the target instead of dog meat and your helper because they'll sometimes they'll shoot your helper and it's like ah no and then the helper will shoot him but yeah like trying to figure out like what's the best strategy and like having that time to think like okay i I can use this many points to get over here and then i can reload (laughs) that's why you always want to initiate combat (laughs) that's that way they're targeting you hit hit that a button Ah. (laughs) hit hit, like the dialogue box is closing start tapping that a button (laughs) (laughs) yeah but i like the uh the D &D influence is pretty clear in this game and that kind of made it easier for me to initially pick up just because I kind of had that in my background. I could, I could be like, Oh yeah, this is, this reminds me a lot of D and D like, yeah. The fact that all of your choices have like a different set of consequences or rewards, you know, depending on what you pick is cool. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and that dreaded roll a, a one and it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you, you shoot yourself and lose a turn or you drop your weapon. I kept doing that. I kept shoot dropping yourself. my weapon. What, uh, what did you start out with your luck? You, I forget. Did you, did you lower it? No, I don't think it was too low. I thought it was actually pretty high, okay. but occasionally I would, maybe it was just a weapon I wasn't supposed to be using anyway. <laughs> it, yeah. You might not have enough points in to use it. Yeah. 
but it would be like, oh, you dropped your weapon and it'd fall around all these corpses and I'd be like, shit, where'd it go? It's so <laughs> tiny. Uh, I've had criticals where dog meat's standing behind me and somehow I, sh- I was shooting away from him and I still like turn around and like kill him. Like, like, ah. Oh, that's so yeah. sad. I'm like, all right, got to reload. <laughs> I like that there's just like so many different weapons and things to find. Like, I think I probably had at least like five or six different kinds of guns. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy for like a game that old on the computer. Like, I don't know. They just had a lot. Yeah. There are a ton uh, of like just different weapon options and fighting Mm -hmm. options. I agree. Which, Which makes me feel like that's why it's so close to like the first like, you know, from paper to video game where it's like, well, we got to have all this stuff. Otherwise it doesn't match up with our D and D. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) True. I like that. You're given a lot of options as far as like what type of character you want to be and want to play. Like not just morality options, but you know, like you can uh, choose to sneak around and like lock pick things or you can be more brazen and stuff Mm -hmm. and just go balls to the wall. Just start chucking grenades and everything. <laughs> that, that's my um, style. I have a that's... question. Do you, so, Luke, you played this game a bunch of times, right? Yes. Do you always pick one of the pre-made characters, or do you do a custom character? I always do a custom character, but that's because I know like the benefits of what and mm-hmm. what to get like in the beginning. Okay. Eric, did you do a pre-made character? Yeah, I just did. I did, uh, what was it, Natalie or Natasha? It was Natalie or Natasha. It might have been Natasha, and I think there was like a... I thought it was Natalia. <laughs> it could have been. It started it's with either those, Natalia, Natasha, or how much, Natalie. Well, I like shows that. how much we paid attention. I, I call her Lady N. Yeah. Lady N. <laughs> or the girl character. Yeah, the girl character. Like I was calling her. <laughs> oh, I have a fun fact, because we learned this other day. We were watching a speed run. She's the fastest character. So if you're doing a speed run, you need to pick her because so, like her stride high. is her animation, quicker. her animation cycle is shorter mm-hmm. than the male. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah she's she, a they bit could faster. actually get her to run faster because of that shorter animation cycle. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Knowledge is power. Quick, 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 quick like a gazelle. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that's awesome about this game is you can save as often yeah, and, you and need as much to. as you want to. It's oh, like, yeah. it kind of reminded me of doom. Like, it was kind of how I played Doom and how I played this, where I was like saving every like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. And you really do like, especially if you're like getting into a dialogue tree with someone and you're like, ah, this could go south. <laughs> and I don't want to, might not necessarily want it to go south. Absolutely. I didn't mean to call you a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. I just wanted to see what would happen. Yeah, I, I, I'm reloading right now. I'm going to apologize at the next, next playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> I actually liked how difficult the game was like how it was like oh it was definitely a challenge i mean like there's like the first thing i did is i went to vault 15 but again i played the game so i knew i needed at least two ropes Mm -hmm. yeah and like well one of those ropes you can find in there after using the first one like you only really need one rope because you can find a rope like within the vault okay yeah i like i just remember i like i bought one from one dude and like in that first the yeah that shed that shed yeah because it, it's curled up there, and I was like, my first thought was like, is that poo? Okay. <laughs> and I, I clicked on it. I was like, a rope? I didn't know that was there. I was like, I, I didn't have to buy that rope. <laughs> I guess it is the shape, yeah. same shape as a poop it, emoji or whatever. Yeah, it, it was, it was kind of curled up. But again, like finding like stuff like that where it's like, there's nothing to indicate like that's a rope that you can pick up. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to go over and like identify it, and like, which is, kind of reminds me of like mist, where it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to click on, but if I keep clicking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I kind of actually had that more as a kind. <laughs> well, but we'll get into it. I have it. one more pro. <laughs> okay. I like that you have Ian, and once you find dog meat, you have dog meat that are there to help you, but you don't actually have to like tell them what do, to do anything for them. Yeah, yeah. they just kind of automatically help you, which is really nice. You you can upgrade their weapons. And, you can, yeah, and, what? and you can give them stem packs that way they can heal themselves. Oh. I did not know that. Yeah, there's you, so much I if, didn't know. If you barter with Ian, you can like give him stuff, yeah. and you can actually take his bottle caps in exchange too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had a different helper. Like I saw Ian, but I was like, I don't want him. And <laughs> like later on, there's a, another helper you can get. It was like Kaja, K A T J A, Kaja, 
And like, I would, I would use her as a mule. I'd be like, well, I can't carry all these weapons. I need to sell. <laughs> so I'll give them to her and then I'll just exchange her stuff that she needs and get my stuff back. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I started eventually doing that with Ian a little bit too. It's like, oh yeah, you can actually carry quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> Which Fallout 2, I believe they make the interaction with your helpers better. And I'm pretty sure in Fallout 2, you can tell Dogmeat to stay. So that way you don't have to worry about him getting into battles. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is kind of an issue. I'm pretty sure because every time like I'll be like, oh, I wish I could just... I'm pretty sure I thought you could. And I was like, it has to be about Fallout 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they probably added that later. All right. Any other pros? I'm ready to talk about the cons. I know you are. <laughs> so Nikki, you make it sound like I hate hate this game. I don't. I don't hate hate it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Nikki, you, <laughs> is there anything that you didn't particularly like about this game, or you oh, might yeah. have thought could have been improved? Oh yeah, Ian is an idiot. I mean, as much, <laughs> yes. as much as I did appreciate him in the battles, sometimes there would be times that I was like trying to run away. And he would literally go the opposite direction as me to go towards the fight. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. Like, in combat. Nope. He goes straight back to it. It's like, well, I guess we're doing this because like, there's no other way. So uh, he was just like always getting in my way, even though he was helpful. It was like, yeah, really the, annoying. The, the really annoying thing to me is just having those helpers where they're following you around. You go into a doorway and then you're like, oh, I don't need anything in here. And you try to go back out and they're just standing in the doorway yes. waiting for you. And it's like, you can't leave until you actually like get them to Walk come around. in. around, yeah. It's pretty annoying. So pretty much like last stage, you set a self-destruct for three minutes and you got to run out. So as I was running out, I got to the last floor. And I'm like, right there is the door to get out. And oh, the helper no. gets in front of me and like... He doesn't want to move. So I literally <laughs> had to kill him. Oh, no. <laughs> to make it out. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. The drama. I was like, the I was drama. Like, I, was like, move. I was like, just move. I don't have time for you to stand here and reload your gun. Like, I don't have time for this. And I'm like, all right, here it goes. And like, like R.I.P. Ian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was dog meat, I'd be like, ah, oh, I got to restart again. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I always feel way more guilty killing the animals than yeah. the people. Yeah, I was like, I was I'm like, like, you should have known better if it's a human. Like, yeah. you should, you're not that stupid. The yeah. dog doesn't know. You yeah. know, the dog doesn't. Know. It's always just trying to be helpful. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I think I, I kind of mentioned this already, but the in-game items that you can actually find on the ground, or if you drop your weapon or something. They're like proportional to your character size. <laughs> so like your character sprites are already re really small. Mm -hmm. So these like weapon I icons on the on the map are actually like super tiny. So there have been several instances where I've dropped a weapon or something and then I just couldn't find it. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I could sit there and like try to scan every like pixel of the map. But I just no, like, I guess that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of like it was kind of frustrating because it'd be like, oh, man, I really needed that or I really like that item. Mm -hmm. and yeah it was just too small for me to find yeah you have to find like that perfect balance of like resolution to size to be like okay this is not too small to where like i can't see anything but it's not too large where i can't see the enemies that are like five feet away from me oh yeah like so it's like you had to like find that like good medium but yeah there's like uh, like a line of pixels and that, that's a flare <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah also that and like trying to move around like like you can give directions to move like a little ways, but if you want to move it to the end of the map, it's like you couldn't just click on the end of the map. It's like you had to like do these points like and it wasn't turn. quite clear like how far you could get them to run. It seems like mm -hmm. you should just be able to click on the edge of the map and just have them run there. I feel like there was like a, maybe like a 30 step yeah. or something like that. Like you can go 30 blocks out before you have to like reclick again. Yeah. That, that was kind of annoying. Yeah. I'm just like, it felt arbitrary. Like why is that a thing? But I don't know. What about you, Luke? Well, like, yeah, like you said, like the controls, I've played so many games to where it's like, I know what good controls are. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's like, they, I feel like this was more or less a beginning of games mm -hmm. for like this type of click stuff. Uh, yeah. They so were still I, trying to figure out what they were doing. Yeah. But yeah, like the controls were just bad. Like, again, like going around to like trying to get around the map. And yes. Uh, also, the inventory was like, mm -hmm. oh my it's God. So slow to use the inventory. And then I felt like mm -hmm. you had to like learn like a weird 
click foo to be able to like use <laughs> stuff while you're in the inventory. Yeah. And then there was also the multiple ways you would have to use an item. Like sometimes you would add it to like your weapon spot and use it. And sometimes like if it was a hard drive or something, you would have to right click and use it from your inventory. Like you couldn't do it the mm. same way. And it was kind of confusing for a while, a long time. It took me a while to figure out how to actually use those, like not hard drives, but um, hollow drives or right. Yeah, I think that's the word. <laughs> but yeah, you actually have to use those when they're in your inventory. Like you have to right click on them and get to the use option. Yeah. Yeah, I have like the clunky controls too. Little, It's little things like clicking on the map and then having to move over and click done to exit out of the map instead of clicking on the map to open it and then clicking on map to close it. You know, little things like that. It's like everything in this game just took forever and i guess that's just 1997 for you because yeah. like the internet was slow like computers in general were pretty slow but i'm not a very patient person <laughs> <laughs> so i was just like ah, i just want to be done with it like <laughs> yeah and i kept like accidentally clicking on the wrong things on accident and then i felt like random things were in random areas and for me personally i kept forgetting to click on the pip thing and didn't even really know what it was until eric was like yeah you need to click on that so you can like move forward in time and stuff yeah like if, if you want to wait if it's night and you need it to be day or whatever and i'm like what yeah, yeah. <laughs> how would i know that by just playing the game this is the first one so i don't know like how am i supposed to know what pip is technically Pip-like. there is a manual that Ugh. Yeah, I think Luke sent along. I didn't think I forwarded it to you, though. <laughs> I don't think you would have read Eric. it anyway. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant in the game. I no, no, like, just like an outside manual yeah. that would have come with it. That kind of stuff would actually be a pro for me because <laughs> I, I literally like to play a game and like then play it again and be like, oh, wait a minute. You mean I didn't have to like walk around the map for for a day i, I could have just went to my pit boy and said like rest for a day mm-hmm. and like so, so I, like i was totally there with, with you on that like uh, that, i'm pretty sure like even like whenever i restarted playing this time i did that where i was like walking around and i was like oh wait a minute and i was like trying to like figure out the status and i was like oh wait oh i could have been doing this the whole time yeah i prefer the game to just maybe tell me in a very, very simple way <laughs> yeah. as long as it's not a tutorial right yeah not a tutorial <laughs> yeah it's like there's a there's a balance between having like too many tutorials and then not having any at all and not yeah. having clear directions yeah ha- having something that like as you do stuff like pops up and says oh by the way until you say don't show again those are nice yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and i'm sure like the game gets better at that like like with the newer versions of it and stuff oh yeah yeah one of the cons i kind of have too is there's a big learning curve for this game at least for me like as someone who hasn't played a lot of pc games or like older games like that it was like i had to learn the controls and i had to learn what i'm supposed to be doing how to fight how to use the weapons by you know because like you can only hold two weapons at a time and like then there's like all these stats you can change and you can also level up and then like you know there's different characters to choose from and like it's just a lot all at once so it takes a while to kind of like figure the game out so if you're not patient person you know you can get frustrated oh yes yeah yeah, for sure yeah yeah yeah, most definitely like i said like playing the game the first time being like (laughs) i don't even know how to play this it's like i'm not even gonna play it but eventually I was like, well, I got to try again. Yeah, yeah. definitely uh, challenging for sure, I think. So my final con is just, it has to do with an isometric view that you have and buildings. Yeah. Like, yes, like when you're in buildings, <laughs> like it's kind of hard to describe. There's this giant part of the building that just covers up a lot of the space in a room. So you can only see like a little sliver of a room and then you'll go down more into the room with your character and then it'll be like this kind of like, oval around your character where you can kind of see a little bit yeah it's like a wall and like basically they don't make the walls invisible yeah they don't make the walls all the way invisible they make some of them they make the ceiling invisible gotcha Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're you're talking about like yeah whenever you walk behind something it does like the little view around you so we can see what's around you but it's only a little ball so yeah yeah so you gotta like tippy toe around so it's really frustrating because you can't really just see you have to actually take your character and walk like through these mm-hmm. areas so you can see what's actually supposed to be there. Cause there yeah. could be something hidden because there are stuff hidden behind I mean, that. yeah, there is uh-huh. stuff that's hidden. So 
And then for me, like the texture of the outside of the buildings and stuff with the coloring, the way they did it, I was always like, where's the door? Like, it was uh, hard yeah. for me to actually see where the doors were. And I kept like missing going in certain buildings because I didn't think there was a door there. <laughs> there really <laughs> was a door there. Sometimes like. the door isn't even like on one of the sides you can see. It's actually on a side you can't see that's covered up by the ceiling of the building. So you have to know that you have to kind of like get close yeah. on the side to look for the door. Yeah, you, you can only see like the walls on the south and west side and the walls on the north and east side. Yeah. You have to be close enough to where it's like it makes the roof disappear. And then you're like, oh, OK, mm-hmm. now I see the door. Yeah, exactly. Which so. I, I do feel like it's bad and good at the same time where good it makes it more difficult bad <laughs> it makes it, it, it just like why did they make a building with no door i think it's just bad i think they i think it's just like the limitation of the software probably you know yeah but i'm gonna say it's just bad not i don't think that, that no. kind of challenge is what i'm the kind of challenge i want to be that's something they doing. definitely can improve on yeah all right anything uh, else as far as cons go I just had like a couple game stuff. Well, like one thing that really bothered me is if you went down in like a basement or something like that where it's totally dark, you could strike a flare, put it in your, you know, like your hand, but it doesn't give you any kind of like light if you're holding your, like your, your weapon slot, mm-hmm. which I feel like it should give you more light. And then also whenever you're in, in the dark, your hit percentage goes way down. But if you put a flare right next to your enemy, it doesn't increase that, even though <laughs> even though you you're, you've increased your view and you can see them now. It's like your your hit chance still doesn't go up. Oh, I never huh. even touched the flares. <laughs> oh yeah, I use the flare, I use the flare to like see like you know where I'm, where I'm going. Like especially if I'm not like sure, I'm like oh there might be something over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of fun like throwing it at a creature because it's just funny. It's like you throw a flare and, like hits them and bounces. And, like now <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that should make your chances go up. Yeah, but uh, they didn't. They didn't think that far ahead. Yeah, I guess I was like, I was like, ah, oh, I was like, what's, what's <laughs> the point of these? Other than I can see slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. know, You may not know the answer to this. Is I just thought of it. But is this a game that people do like mods of a lot? Like Doom. You know how people do different versions of Doom. Do people do that with this game? Mm, I don't know if that's as popular. Uh, I know there's some stuff, but. I know there's mods for like I mean Fallout we three. I mean we did the uh, uh, high but, resolution patch with which I think is a mod, right? I would guess so. It's definitely a patch of like an updated patch or something. But yeah, now it seems like it's included in the regular game itself. Yeah, so. it's, it's cool. not like downloaded separately. Yeah, I was just curious because I was like, oh, you could do a mod and well, just tweak that one little thing where your <laughs> players, you know. I, I feel like I feel like Fallout. Two and Fallout Tactics were mods <laughs> because it's pretty much the same game except for you're playing it slightly different. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. So yeah, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 I think were the mod heavy ones where you could like just go nuts. Cool. Yeah. I, I actually played a Fallout 3 mod where you could play with two people. But it oh, was nice. it was super glitchy to the point where we didn't we, we like tried uh, it. We, we tried it out like one time or like yeah this isn't fun yeah uh, yeah that sucks darn but sounds they, cool though they tried yeah <laughs> that's usually what it is it's someone like hey what if I try this thing and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't well, yeah they, they came out with Fallout seventy six so that was the first multiplayer Fallout uh, okay yeah and it wasn't quite as popular I got it I just felt like again like playing Fallout three Fallout four. I felt like it didn't match up. And, I, and uh, it was like you Fallout 3, you'd go in this big building and it would take you a while to like clear it out. Fallout 76, it's like you walk in, you search like three things and you're done. And I'm like, that's not fun. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I do want to go back and play it. Uh, who knows? Maybe they've improved it since because sometimes like when a game initially releases, it's almost like a, <laughs> like a tech demo state or something. Right. It's I, like, especially nowadays. Like that now. Yeah, yeah. And it will take like, and then like two or three years later, it'll be great. And sometimes it won't be. And they just will never have fixed it because it didn't <laughs> sell well. Yeah. So you never know. All right. So moving on. If we don't have my any... favorite part. Strategy. <laughs> Strategy. All right, Nikki. Woo-hoo. I have so many things. <laughs> Listed out for the strategy of this game because I was so good at it. You're number one. <laughs> number one strategy. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just kidding. True, my, true, true, true gamer. My actual, <laughs> my actual real first piece of strategy is go into the settings 
and set it to always run. Yes. <laughs> that and to save constantly. We ain't got no we do not have time for walking in this game. <laughs> save constantly, use multiple save states because you will need them and also run all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you, like there are so many times where you're like, ah, oh, I didn't I, I didn't mean to like pull out my gun and like start a battle in the middle of town. Yeah. And it's like, well, now I got to like either, well, either I got to kill everybody and not be able to come back here or I got to relive. I did a whole dungeon that like the, the glow or whatever. I didn't realize like I had like right away. I'm like, oh, I have like six of these. That should be enough for whatever radiation I get in here. <laughs> it turns out it wasn't even close. Like I got so much radiation. Oh no. Like I didn't, it doesn't tell you a number though. So you don't know, really know. You have to find a pit boy attachment and it'll tell you that. Uh, okay. So if you have an attachment, it'll tell you, I guess. I, I, which I never use. It's just more or less when it told me I was radiated, I'd be like, let me, let me. But yeah, then I realized there was another way that you were supposed to do that. So I basically had a couple states where it was like, yeah, this was unwinnable because my character was so radiated. <laughs> so I had to go back to a previous state. So that kind of like bailed me out. So And I, there's like certain buildings too that you can't walk into with weapons or you immediately like get attacked. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. like, ooh, didn't know that. Let's yeah, try that again. <laughs> most of the towns will want you to not have your weapons out. Yeah, it's like hard to remember though the way the inventory thing is set up. Yeah. It's like... Oh, I gotta click in here and drag this over and like all this stuff. <laughs> all right, what about you, Luke? Well, first thing I would do is I always create my own character, and so whenever you do that, put your intelligence up to at least eight. Yeah, because the more intelligence you have, the more skill points you get every level. Oh, cool. So you can all of a sudden like level like your small guns, like max them out, and all of a sudden you're you know. Did I dick? Yeah, that sounds pretty important. Yeah, I was too like, I guess because first my, my first time playing, you know, I was like too intimidated to create my own character. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I thought it would be like, okay, yeah, these are some base characters that would be pretty good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I just didn't really have a clue at that point. So, well, the great thing about the game is that you can totally do your points however you want you still make it through it it's uh, you might be relying more on luck or Mm -hmm. whatever but like you you pretty much can do whatever yeah so one of my pieces of advice is to talk to ian the leather jacket guy in the first (laughs) town and get him to join you because he will make the early fights a lot easier especially like going through that first uh i think it's vault 15 right yeah yeah like he helps a lot especially being lower level he just does a lot more damage earlier on than you do yeah so it's just like nice to have someone who can pretty much kill everything Mm -hmm. eventually it'll kind of like flip where you'll you'll get stronger than him like way stronger but it is nice early game to have that as an assistant but you know you also kind of shoot each other a little bit you know when you (laughs) roll those ones you make those critical mistakes oh yeah Ian's pretty bad about that he's just like i'm not gonna move you need to move or i'm just gonna shoot (laughs) yeah (sighs) What a character, that Ian. I love Ian. <laughs> He's a hoot. <laughs> Ian looks like half the other bad guys in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's oh, like, my God. There's yeah. one fight where I was like, <laughs> it's like you're fighting 12 Ians. I was like, <laughs> I don't even know where the real Ian's at. Like, like, which one of these is the real Ian? <laughs> like, Seriously. Well, well, the real Ian, please step, stand up. I mean, at least change the color of the jacket. <laughs> like, like, I'm Ian. No, I'm Ian. <laughs> oh, God. Which one do I shoot? I know. Yeah, I felt t- like I was in a movie. Like, uh. Tell me something no one else will know. I, I shot you twice in the back yesterday. Okay, you're Ian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Talk to everybody because a lot of times in the dialogue, they'll give you hints as to other parts of the map and like where kind of to go and explore. So if you read those and stuff, you can... The map's really big, so it kind of helps you have at least some kind of like, what like what's the word? I'm point of for? reference. Yeah, some kind of point of reference of like which direction. Yeah, so you, yeah, you learn this town is south of this town, or yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and plus, like sometimes you'll have to speak to a random person. Is it Junk Town? Yeah, Junk Town where Gizmo is that word? Junk Town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So you you have to defeat like the skanks or something like that. <laughs> there, 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 there's a the there, army of skanks there, there, there there's a gang Is called it? like the skanks or stags skags Stangs? yeah but, something but like you know i know what you're talking they're, about they're, they're in that hotel but like you, yeah do you have to fight them well you have to get a mission to like whether or not you're gonna like help them or not and i was like well i'm gonna like bust them like you know get, <laughs> get that way like to get rid of them 
And like, in order to complete that, you have to spend the night in the hotel or you can't go any further. Hmm. Huh. So, so if, if you don't talk to them and be like, well, I guess I'll try to sleep in the hotel. <laughs> it was actually one of the ones I did last because I was like, I wasn't sure what to do. And I was just like, screw it. I'm going to stay in a hotel. And all of a sudden it's like, what? There's, there's dialogue. I got to kill this guy. Okay, here, <laughs> here we go. You know, so, that, so that's how you start finally, that quest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, but yeah, talking to everybody and like trying stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. try stuff. Definitely. So grenades are great. I recommend <laughs> stockpiling those. Mm-hmm. Uh, way better than dynamite, in my opinion. I've tried to use dynamite in a few fights. And that just does not work well. Yeah, you got that timing. You got yeah, it. you have a timer on your dynamite. So you set the timer, and you're like, okay, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Like Whoa, that's a long 90. time. Well, I don't, you don't really quite have a frame of reference for uh-huh. how long it's going to take to go off, really. Like I'm, I wasn't really sure how long to set the timer, and whenever I did, it felt like way too long. <laughs> so, so, yeah, sorry. Unless it like blew up uh, because I set it poorly or something. <laughs> so that's one thing I would put as a con too, which is like you have to set the time, and after you do that, it goes to the bottom of your inventory, and then you got to scroll down to your bottom of your inventory, and then like drop it. And then you got to run away. And yeah. It's like, in my mind, it's like, should I be counting out in my head right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I'd do is I'd lay it down and then I'd run away. And then like the guy chasing me would just like run past it like the next turn. And then it wouldn't blow up until like three or four turns later. When nobody like, was yeah. around. <laughs> it's like, then I kept like going back over it. Like, <laughs> okay, maybe this time I can get it to blow up. on <laughs> <laughs> I, I walk back and be like, well, maybe I didn't set it. And I'll get back to it. And it's like, boom. Uh, <laughs> RIP. <laughs> so you can send a water convoy to your vault to give yourself more time. Yep. That's pretty important, I think, because I feel like that initial time is not nearly enough. Especially if you don't know the map yet. Yeah. I actually got the uh, the, the the chip like within a couple of days. Oh, wow. Yeah. But again, I knew what I was If you know for. what you're doing, <laughs> you can do it quickly. That's why I put that caveat in there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm walking back and forth over the map, yeah. and I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, wasting time. Like, like, like literally, when I when I got to the, uh, what is like the, the water monarchy or whatever they're called that, that controls all the water, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's this much. And I was like, but can I do this instead? And I was like, oh, I might come back. Uh, but... Yeah, they also give you a warning that it'll, like raiders will be able to find it easier if you send a caravan out there. I think that's my my been the reason why. I was yeah, like, oh. and I was just like, I don't know. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> I need, need some more time. So I haven't seen the consequences yet in my playthrough. So <laughs> yeah, it's more or less like however you want to play. It's like I don't think it affects anything as far as I know. Yeah, because I don't really think that raiders ever find the vault, even if you do that. Yeah, I got you. And then I just had a, one more. Um, doorways are great. If you have like an en- enemy who's trying to target you and they can't like pass through the doorway because one of your companions is in the way, mm-hmm. they will just stand there and let your companion kill them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is great. So doorways can really be your friend or they can be your enemy if your companions are in the way. Corners are also a good thing. So if you get the, the Gatling gun, you can like just run around the corner if you have all the aggro and as like the like super mutants or whatever they, they have to use their points to get up to you and the moment they get around the corner you just blast them and like that way <laughs> that way you don't have to worry about them being like so far out you can't even see them but they're shooting at you already and you got to use all your action points to get closer to them you can hide and have them come down to you yeah so they that way they're like kind of like funneling and coming in single file so yeah, and you just stand there <laughs> and you, ne- next turn you wait for this guy to walk in and you just like <laughs> you just like step on into the, the, the suicide booth <laughs> any other strategy stuff zach that's in the boneyard has unlimited caps so you can just keep selling stuff to him all you have to do is sell stuff to him get out of the menu, talk to him again, and he'll have another 3,000 caps. Oh, so wow. so you can just sell everything you find and buy anything <laughs> you want if I just keep going back to him. I don't, think I, got, I don't think I met Zach. He was in the boneyard. He's in the fortress part, which was surrounded by the the like the river of like toxic goo. Oh, okay, yeah. I may, yeah. Not, have, I don't know, I may not have gone to that part. Like, yeah, you have to get past the um, death claws, I think, right? Uh, is it death claws? Well, no, you don't need to do that. Granted, like I, I did, but like, uh, you have to sneak past the death claws. Yeah. That's what I did initially. 
And then he gives you a mission to kill the death claws. Yes. And I, those death claws are really freaking hard to kill. Yes, they are. Got to gotta aim for the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> my strategy was like trying to aggro one and just have it chase me while my companions attacked it. <laughs> but it didn't, it wasn't that great. <laughs> Mine was more like fishing. I was like, I was going to wait until they get far enough away from each other to where I can pull him away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to take all three at yeah. once or no. all two. Or yeah, whatever. two, two, that's, that's almost too much. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just sitting there healing yourself while your companions do damage. So moving on to the future. Da, da, da. I did find a couple things for the future. You guys find anything? Well, I only found like one thing, but probably the same things. <laughs> yeah, so um, there hasn't been an announcement for for Fallout 5 yet, but Todd Howard, uh, a director and executive producer at Bethesda, did confirm that Fallout 5 will be their next project after Elder Scrolls 6. So possibly by 2030, 2040. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll probably be a, a big gap. Yeah. yeah. I think they have to release Skyrim a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they need to like make their company bigger or not, but <laughs> yeah, it's like can we well, not have two I mean, teams? Yeah, like, making two games. They're one time? they're owned by Microsoft now, so really, yeah, it's even bigger. So they should be big enough <laughs> to pump yeah. out these games now. Yeah, we need definitely. to start emailing them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Where what was the other thing it? you found? Because that that was really the only thing that I saw. Oh man, so you haven't heard. Uh uh-uh. uh. So Th- this might be why I was talking about spoiler alerts with my lore. So coming April twelfth, a Fallout television show. Oh really? Is going to be on uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah. How did I not see that? Yeah, you're usually all about that stuff, Nick. Yeah. I know. Well, I literally put it like Fallout news. You think that would come up? <laughs> like yeah. whatever. That, that's so why I got so April, excited. April twelfth. Yeah. yeah. Like any good actor who's going to be I in it? I have no you know? idea. I did not look. Yeah, there are some. Like the detective from Twin Peaks. I'm um, not sure what his real name is. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really famous guy. Is it uh, John Hamm? No. Uh, I don't know any celebrities. So. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure his name. Give me one second. Uh, I'll look it up. The, the one guy that does the voice uh, for the father of Rick and Morty. Which, oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Which, which I, I had a problem with that. Uh, uh, Parnell, right? I, I tried not to know their names. <laughs> <laughs> One of the bigger names that I recognize is Walton Goggins. He was in The Shield, which I'm a re- really big fan of. He's also in Django Unchained, Predators, Justified, The Hateful Eight. And then it looks like a lot of like smaller actors and actresses. Ella Purnell is playing Lucy, Aaron Moten is playing Maximus, which I don't even... Maximus was in this game, so... They might be doing one of the later Fallouts. Yeah, I, like, mm-hmm. from the, the preview, it almost looked like Fallout 3, where, like, looked like almost like a scene from... Like, when I saw it, I was like, that's Megaton. That's Megaton City right there. Because oh, like, yeah. they had, like, the plane in the background. I was like, that looks, like, right out of my memory. And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> um, I, I did have a, a couple of issues with the, uh, the preview, which is in the vault... The guy I was talking about, he's a cyclops, and it's like, why is he a cyclops? I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a cyclops in the games. Yeah, that's and it, weird. And if he's in the vault, then he shouldn't have been irradiated to become a cyclops. So I'm wondering what so they're going to say about that. That means that they would have had to specifically try to breed a cyclops somehow. Maybe they Which definitely. Is- they definitely should have consulted you before they made yeah. this show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's why I, that's that's why I got so excited about the lore because I'm like the TV show is going to come out. It's like yeah. how, how close are they going to follow this, and are they going to have all like the the enclave and are, how they're going to are they going to show all like the backstory and all the secret stuff that's going on in the background? Don't get your hopes. Uh, yeah, up. I was about to say, <laughs> I bet they do a terrible job. But yeah. I, I, like, because they are really bad about. Script. I mean, there are a few good examples of them doing good, like video game series or video game movies. But for the most part, they tend to do a bad job. <laughs> yeah, which I, I think the the people who worked on like the boys, I think they're supposed to be doing a lot of the like the production of it. I heard that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the TV show The Boys. Yeah. yeah, it's like super over the top, like crazy, like cringeworthy, but it's kind of like. I gotta, I gotta watch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know it's really popular. 
Well, for your sake, I hope it's good, Luke. I don't ever get my hopes up anymore. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's better because whenever it is good, I'm like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Like, Low I love the movie Dodgeball, and I always think about that scene in Dodgeball where, uh, what's his fate? What's the uh, average Joe's guy? Vince, Vince Vaughn. Oh, yeah. When Vince Vaughn's character is like, if you have expectations, you get let down when you don't meet them. If you don't have any, you don't get disappointed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I do that with every movie and TV show now because I was just let down too many times by like some movies that I got excited for. Yeah. And they were so awful. <laughs> yeah, you, you wait, you wait out out in line since you know the crack of morning to to watch a movie, and mm-hmm. it's like I've been waiting in line for twelve hours for this. <laughs> yeah, for real. I've been waiting five years for this. Like, uh. <laughs> all right, we should talk about the challenges Luke gave us and how mm-hmm. we did. Okay. I think I've already given so, it away. So let's start end. with you, Nikki. <laughs> Your challenge was to get the water chip and the vault mascot dog meat back. Yes, on easy. Oh, on easy <laughs> difficulty. I definitely did that. Easy mode part, check. <laughs> dog meat, check. Water chip, no check. Uh, Sorry. Okay. I got two thirds of the challenge. Does that count? <laughs> it, it, no. 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 Not, I, I, let's check with the vault. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. They're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're all dead because they didn't get any clean water. Yeah. Oh, okay. They, 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 they tried that whole Bears girl drinking their own urine. Hey. They're, like, <laughs> they're, like, they're like, nah. At least, yeah, that's a myth. That's a myth. <laughs> at least my vault would have survived longer because I did send that caravan to them. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I did not get any of this. What was, what was your challenge again? Uh, my challenge was to get the power armor and the gas gun on normal on normal okay yeah did, were you able to get that i was able to put it on normal <laughs> uh, but you but didn't you didn't get the gun or the i other? got to where the gatling gun was <laughs> in the glow mm. well you you can purchase those too also later yeah so but the first time i did it like i died and then i was doing my second attempt where you're supposed to actually do it right where you do the the rad x before you go in and get fully re- radiated. <laughs> so I was I was doing it right, but I just didn't have enough time. Yeah, I ran out of time. Yeah, that, that's that was one of my concerns. I was like, ah, are you guys gonna have enough time to even get this? Because I mean, it's not just like like you guys just sit and just play video games. You guys got lives. And I, I was like, I was like, well, I, I shouldn't say beat the game because I like they'll never have time to do that. <laughs> but Good it was call. still Good like call. I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun, and I probably will go back and finish it. Well, I, I gave myself my own challenge, which was Ooh. on normal, keep dog meat alive the whole time, get the power armor. And watch every single episode of your guys' podcast. Oh my <laughs> I, I, I watched every single episode, and, 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 and this, this is what I got. Yay! Oh, nice! Uh, after you do that, probably, oh, he got he got a T-shirt just yeah. because oh, he can't yeah, see yeah. the oh, visual. Yeah. Uh, Pressing that T-shirt for, for just the audience contingent. Like, yes. uh, but from yeah. our website, so, yeah, you, you, watch, you, you watch all the episodes or listen to all the episodes, and for only a, like twenty dollars shipping, you get a free shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the shipping is ridiculous on that, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's cool though that you have the shirt on awesome Looks good. Uh, so I guess we're wrapping since you did the challenge I guess you can wrap with us if you want Luke I think we kind of actually kind of made you <laughs> yeah uh, Luke's wrapping yeah, I, 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 I'm not not that great I'm, I'm like the whitest white boy there is so <laughs> <laughs> well let's hear it Called up by the overseer, his quest could have been a little clear. One last look in the mirror, I hope I find some quality beer. Now I'm a lonely loner, on a lonely road alone. Traveling through the unknown, I found a dog with skin and bone. Ran into some glowing ghouls, some of them talk and others drool. I try to follow the golden rule, and kill the only ones that act a fool. Keeping mutants off my back, excuse me while I reload my get. Getting ready for my blast attack, and now I can eat my iguana snack. Junk Town's hero, yeah, it's your bro. Gizmo Richie Rich started with zero. Now I own a casino from the bottom. 
riding to the top I'm the cream of the crop Stop, lock, and drop Adjust your f-stop This ain't kids bop Now stop, I need a favor Morals might waver But you'd be my savior Straight with no chaser Killian's face needs an eraser Thousand caps for the acer Or I'll hit you in your facer Got slick back hair If I'm hurt, then I'm fleeing I shoot without care, I'm your new bestie Ian I'm sorry I shot you, ain't sorry I fought through the armies of gun crew who bury a lot Dude, shoot bullets ain't counting, got black boots from grounding I'll kick you, ain't clowning, an acute sense of frowning Now watch me die, I get burned alive When things go awry, a skeleton high five I'm black and blue, a little bit crispy too Dog meat can chew as I bit adieu Adieu my friend, adieu to you I knew it would end adieu Luke, I was not that bad. It was not that bad. I thought it was good. It was, uh, it was, it was your the, first time ever rapping, you know? It's kind of a weird rhythm, too. Exactly. Yeah, that, yeah it was tricky. All right, so moving on to the next game. So, Nikki. Yeah, Eric gets to pick. I get to pick, and my choice is to let you pick because I got two options for you. I got. Okay, we doing like a door A, door B yeah, sort of thing? I got door okay. number 1A and door number 2B. <laughs> Oh, my God. Why do you have to make it so complicated? <laughs> Look for the secret door. Oh, uh, I do not have a secret door. <laughs> there gonna, is no door three. I'm going to go with B for your little bitch. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. B for your beautiful, Eric. Door number 2B. So you just chose Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures. <laughs> Woo! What's the, what console is that on? Sega Genesis. Is, oh, is that the one I got you for Christmas? You actually bought me this game, so... Uh, you did not ask for this game. I went rogue and I picked it out myself at Still Collectibles because the label on the game was so ridiculous. It was like this ridiculous looking Pac-Man guy. It's like hang it's gliding. Like, like yeah. a Mega Man cover. Uh, we'll, we'll show you in a second, but it's just like I saw it on the wall and I was like, this is a weird looking Pac-Man game get it <laughs> and it was only like i don't know eight bucks or something so yeah so technically you did this to yourself then <laughs> so this game has a reputation and i don't know what that reputation is it's like just like a weird i hope it's as weird as the art it is i i don't know if it qualifies as a bad game or not i kind of think it I does we'll find out <laughs> but i haven't actually played it so we'll find out uh do you want to hear what cha- your challenge is i mean that's a part of the fun just like neither of us have played this game so yeah that's true all it's right gonna be a surprise so your challenge uh is to get pack jr's guitar back <laughs> you've never played the game how did you come up with that challenge i, I look through the missions oh. and stuff oh gotcha. so it's one of the later missions okay great <laughs> there's, i mean there's only like four or five missions total i think there's only t- four missions in this mm, game yeah we'll see how okay we'll see how it goes uh, you get ready to con- i'm excited tr- we haven't done a sega game in a while yeah and this is the kind of game where you get to control the main character with a slingshot <laughs> so woo, like angry birds <laughs> no, nothing like angry birds <laughs> not even a little bit <laughs> dang it <laughs> all right well sounds fun all right and I just want to say thank you to Luke Newcom for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was great. Yeah, it's always cool to have a special guest, especially one that we've known for so long. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, really enjoyed uh, nerding out with you guys. It's been a yeah. long, it's been a long time coming for you to be on the podcast. Yeah, excellent. And we got to get Austin on. Yeah, next. it's kind of funny that I've had you on before, Austin. But of course, he's all the way in California. Yeah, accessibility. So it's tough. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Austin. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. All right, bye.